Hello and welcome back to Voices of Hope. Um, we are here in the studio with, oh, whoa, hear the voice of the Lord. But first, before we do hear from woe and the voice of the Lord, let's um, bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, thank you for who you are. For Lord, you know, holy, righteous, just, and true are your judgments, God. And Lord, I, I don't know, Lord, what your plan is. But God, I pray for those listening here tonight. I pray that you would wrap your arms around them. Please keep them with you by your name and by your power. For your glory, Father. I pray that your name would be glorified tonight. And all that we say and do. Lord, they're your people, the sheep of your pasture. Lord, you promise to care and protect them and keep them always. Lord, and I pray that that's just what you do. Um, Lord, I pray also for your word as it goes out. You said it would not return to you, Lord. So, Lord, we put all things in your hands. It's been in your hands anyway from the beginning of time. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From Revelation 9, 3-4, 13 to 14, 11 and 12. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. For just and true, holy and righteous are your judgments, O God, who was, and is, and is to come. It is your way, O God, and not our own at all. Forgive us, then, Lord, for standing in your way. How some of us would do well to practice it, as in Revelation 15.3, a bit more often. In judgment, then, as in mercy, it is important first to get a right view of God. Here, if you do not view him correctly, all else will be messed up. How often have you been in a situation, focused on it long enough, and soon it was all that could be seen? Yet in Revelation 5, 5-6, through 6, John and all of heaven saw him well. Whether as the lamb who has been slain, or the lion of the tribe of Judah who has overcome all, catching sight of who God is, is key to putting everything else in place. It shall be then that he desires of Hosea 6.6 6, mercy and not sacrifice, for if the appointing is spiritually given based on physical patterns of behavior, so also is the anointing. Yet here we see that both have physical manifestations, as in Jeremiah 1, they are carried out in the world. It is for this cause in Malachi 3.11, he promised to rebuke the destroyer for our sake. If all the rest are spiritual appointments and anointments carried out physically, then could not the matter of the sealing also be seen in spiritual matters? Just when you think you have written the last chapter, the devil's finally won. God has a way of bringing you out. Somebody shout, He's keeping me. Perhaps you did not hear. I said, Is he keeping you? Oh, my friends, it seems God is in the keeping business. His mercies are new every morning, and his faithfulness is still there. How easily he could have thrown away the fallen angels and rose up to start again. But for the fact, he's keeping you. Amen. God is keeping. God is bringing his children home. Amen. He's bringing his prodigals back into his heavenly kingdom. He's bringing some people into his house today, which really have no business being there, if you ask me. See then their nature in Luke fourteen twenty one to 24 as at first. They come now, the lame, the halt 
the blind, the destitute, and those without, that his house may be filled. There is a feast ready for those of you that know the Lord. My, it should be good news to some indeed after all the days of famine. See that of the marriage supper of the Lamb. O oh, my dear friends, all are invited. What is your excuse for not making it? And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Trust me, these angels who had been bound at the bottom of the river Euphrates for their outrageous actions once had plenty. Now, here scripture does not directly state who these are, nor yet for what actions they were bound. But their sending purpose in the hands of the Lord indicates it well. These are some destroying angels with the heart of the enemy of in John 10.10. 10. Remember, he sought only to steal, kill, and destroy, if you will. Notice the heart of the Father on display for his church. Somebody shout, appointed for a saving purpose. With all these forces let straight out of hell, your life is on the line. More than that, your relationship with God is being tested. You will be kept by his position, his power, and by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 1, 12-13 testifies to the position of the seven lampstands and the churches standing before him. See this one who holds all things in his hands. Believe me, if it was possible for you to fall all by yourself, you would. But by the blood of the Lamb, and your position in Christ, are you kept. These saints of Revelation 12:11 then, have overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Now are the purposes of God from out of judgment to bring righteousness. God is calling all people unto himself at this time, spoken of by Second Corinthians 6, 2. If he allows you to hear him, do not delay. Today is not promised, and tomorrow is never given. Hear the Lord while it is called today, then, and respond. Tomorrow might be forever too late. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, has his name Apollyon. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Kibu tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. One row is passed, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Notice these locust manner of dress. They each had their own crowns on their heads, indicating they ruled in their own right. Yet here they bow before the one who wears his by default of his suffering, since price demanded being paid. Not only did Jesus pay it all, but he also set it all aside for a moment. To win these also. Revelation twenty two seventeen through nineteen is for all should any but come to him. Whomsoever will may come with all invited to the wedding banquet, both small and great. See the point is not whether God let these out or not, or whether he saved them or not. The fact of the matter is they came at his bidding for the purpose of doing his will. Revelation 5 shows the matter thusly. Of all heaven and earth and that underneath, none could be found to break the seal, open the scroll, or pick up his crown, much less with rights to sit on his throne. So then, in Revelation 4, 10-12, all those bearing crowns, 
however they might have obtained them. Bow before the king. And it's also important to see in Revelation 4, 10 through 12, it does refer to the 24 elders, generally regarded as those keeping watch over the church. Um, I would have to do more research on that to confirm it. However, it is interesting to point out and also to note that That is the only place that I can find in Revelation which is, has the crowns mentioned. And then it also meant, does mention, hold on a minute. It is also interesting to note that Revelation 2.10 refers to the crown of life. It says, Fear none of these things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be ye faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Regardless, we cast those crowns before him, as did the elders in Revelation 4, 10-12. More than that, these take off those crowns to lay before his throne. Now, by no means am I suggesting that the Lord has somehow emptied hell and taking them all off to heaven in a cloud of glory. Oh no. This is the Lord's place. Of that you can be sure. So then he can be trusted. For it was his place all along. How some of us would do well. To leave the vision and the interpretation thereof. Then unto himself. See it is hard to have what has been given without first seeing the giver. Thus, O oh, the God of Revelation 5 has not yet been clearly seen, let me refer you back to him. I want us to see this King Jesus for just a moment. He is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He is honorable above all and all things despicable. He is seen as a servant and the master the ruler and the Lord, above all, before all, and in all, most holy. Little wonder, then, that all of heaven praises him, who was, and is, and is to come, for whose pleasure all things were created, and by him hold together, even those of your life and mine. Hear him now, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. O oh, woe has been given. The voice of the Lord. Revelation 9 And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, nor neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the sting of a scorpion when he strikes a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locust were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel 
of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two more, two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having blessed plates of fire, and of jacinth, and bone stone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor of their fornications, excuse me, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. It is good to have you along listening um, tonight on this uh, journey with us. Um, we have heard we're given the voice of the Lord, and we will see you next time on Voices of Hope.